this match was supposed to be cancelled due to the COVID outbreak. So if, by some strange weird house reason, Chelsea still conspired to lose to this Man City team with the players they have missing, Um, here we are right now. Things were so different. Before Arsenal, we're going to pop bottles. Treble. Premier League talk. CL talk. Things were good. Things were nice. Nick. Nick. See what's up? But now, depression. A civil war is brewing within Chelsea fandom. Things are at their worst. Things are desperate. Things are confused. But all a man can do is to live. That's all a man can do is to live. Live. I didn't think this game was going to happen. I really didn't, I didn't even believe this game was going to happen. I thought, you know, this game is not going to happen. No, we're, we're wrong. But no, it's still happening. But we've now heard that Edison, Jesus, and um, Kyle Walker are going to be out due to COVID. So it's them, and I think it's five in total. So then there are another two, two more in there. So City don't have a striker. I think Aguero's lynched, I believe. So Jesus is out. They don't have a, a striker. First choice right back is out, and the first choice kick keeper is out. So, it's going to be a much changed Man City team. So, this game is even more so to the advantage for Chelsea. But for Man City, I, I still, because City have played and have still done well without Jesus because they've used and employed Sterling as like a false nine stroke striker. Um, but these are key, key, key losses. Pep causes a manager and a coach, and the team is so entrenched in their philosophy it's gonna it's, it, they're, they're gonna feel the losses but i still think they will be able to cope to a certain degree but i think pep knows that it's going to be a difficult game with with the losses that they've had it is going to be a difficult game and it's going to be a tough game and i think even as well based, based on the covid outbreak i think they've had like one day less for training so they're not coming into this game really in the most prepared state of mind so Quite a few things are stacked against them, but there's still quality there. There's still quality there, but these are misses. These are misses, and you cannot deny that um, for your boy Pepisi, you know, you cannot deny that for your boy Pepisi, he's going to have to think long and hard. He's going to have to think long and hard as to how to set the team up. Um, because you see, for me, I'm not a guy of, of excuses, and I say hashtag no excuses. But this is the, this is one of those weird years. <laughs> this is one of those weird years here where you know you, you no long you not only have to deal with injuries, but also with COVID outbreaks. Hence, why I've always said that any team that wins the league this season, it is a stupendous achievement. Whichever manager wins the Premier League this season based on how crazy England have had to struggle with the COVID cases, thanks, Doris, um, you have to give them the dub. It would be an amazing achievement. And if Pep manages to win the league with Man City this season, based on where they are right now, what they've had to deal with, the amount of crazy games in the hand that they have, it would be... And even Pep would... Because remember, I think Pep said that his greatest ever league win was the 98 points based on how much Liverpool pushed them all the way through. But I think if he does win this league, it would be his greatest achievement. So coming into this game, um, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Um, and now we now go to our, our dear friend now. <laughs> we go to our dear friend now, Lamps.
I don't want to hear a single freaking excuse if Chelsea loses this game. Because Chelsea are not, are not losing this game. I refuse to believe that Chelsea are going to lose this game. But there are no excuses. Chelsea have to win this game. They have to beat Man City. They have to win this game. They have to win this game because even if ZH, I don't, I don't think he'll be he'll be fit for this game and so forth. Based on the score they have and the players that are still available, Chelsea should win this game because both of your strikers are available. <laughs> All of your defenders are pretty much available. So you have all of the pieces at your disposal. They're all available. So Chelsea should win this. And I think that based on the kind of run that they've been on, because trust me, you lose too many of these games, you start losing ground. You start losing ground. You know, because for me, Chelsea are making top top four. Because I don't even want to I don't even want to even go down that oh, nice marriage alley of Chelsea not even making top four this season. But for Lampard, I just I, I I need him to understand this that don't you dare use any kind of excuse if you don't come away with three points. I don't want to hear any ex- ex- excuse. If it's a draw or a loss, I don't want to hear about oh the players were too lazy, the players didn't do too well. Oh, I had a, I had a reaction and so forth. For the first time, take it on the chin and say like I messed up. We should have done better. It is what it is. We should have done better. We should, we, we should have won that game. I'm angry with the team. I'm angry with myself. We should, have, we, should, we should have done better. You know, because... And that's the thing is that we have Lampard enablers. People who are just cheerleaders for him. Who will defend him because they feel that it's the right to defend him. For me, I'm, I'm an objective merchant. I'm a truth merchant. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a truth seeker. So, coming into this game, I think it is very important that... Um, that Lampard gets to me because Lampard is under pressure. He's under a great amount of pressure right now because he is fighting for his job. <laughs> you know, without a shadow of a doubt, he's fighting for, for a job. So you look at who they should go with. Now, from a tactical point of view, from a tactical point of view, um, you would say Tammy Abraham makes more sense because he's more mobile and he'll be better in the transition. But from what we've seen, I just believe that Giroud is the striker. He is. He is. The, he should be the first choice striker, and Chelsea should just accept that he is the first choice striker. Now, if he's injured, or if you're in a cup game and so forth, or if there's a particular game that you think that Tammy could work well in, boom. But for the multitude of games, it's really should be Giroud. I think Giroud has just shown that he is a more reliable striker. He's a more reliable goal scorer than, than Tammy. Tammy can his upside is great. His upside is great. But this isn't a development program here. Okay. This is a winning program. This is about winning. This is about getting wins. And I think for this game, I just think it would work best for Giroud. To operate and do his thing in this in, in this game, and actually starts as a striker. And my thing here is, is because I just want someone to help me here because I am confused. I am I am confused. Um, is I need someone to tell me what this guy has done wrong, because especially in a game like this, in a game like this, you. It is important that Chelsea protect the ball because, you know, that, that, that is what City do very, very well. It is very important that Chelsea protect the ball. And unless I've lost, like, my footballing analytical touch or something, Kovacic is the most pressed resistant and the best natural central midfielder in the team. So how do you have a situation where you're the best natural central midfielder in the team isn't always in the team when the central midfielder is one of the most important positions? Because Kante is much more of like a DM, box-to-box. Mount is much more attacking. Jorginho, he, 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 he ain't it. And even if Jorginho is there, he's much more deeper. In fact, of a guy who is the metronome, every team needs a metronome. He is the metronome of, of the team. And the metronome is indispensable. See, that is indispensable. That is one, one of the first names on the team sheets is your metronome, is the guy who dictates 
whether it's your Tony Cruz, Modric, whether it's your Javi, whether it's your Pirlo, whether it's your William Cavalio, you owe every team needs a freaking metronome. <laughs> you know, you need that. You need that dictator who sets the stage for how the team operates and how they play. For Liverpool, you could argue it's a, well, now it's Thiago Alcantara. You know? So, Kovacic is going to be very important in this game and it's going to be very, very key. And, but I think as well, if we're now switching over to Man City right now, based on, I just think that based purely on, okay, let me, let me bring this in, man. Um, based on what's happening on Sterling is going to be very important. No Jesus, no Aguero. Sterling's going to be key. And I do feel that a big reason as to why City have not really been able to say what's up so far this season. Of course, a crazy jagged season is, I, I 100% believe that that's miss that Sterling hand affected it. That's miss, open goal miss. I watched it right here. It's truly affected Raheem Sterling. And he hasn't been the same since that. That's miss. Those 900 points, 98 point season, Sterling was a very big part of that, a huge part of that. And City will not be successful until Sterling starts staying what's up and until he starts doing his thing. I think it's going to be a difficult game for, for Rem Sterling because he's going to be the main point of attack. And City are going to re rely on him to either get the goals, get in behind the, the Chelsea defence, or find himself in good pockets of space. So... It's going to be very important to see how he's utilized, how he's used, and how he's employed in the in in the game. So this is going to be, be, be key for him because he is going to be the goal. He is the he is the guy that they're looking to 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 get those G's, you know, um, and then we have him again. He's going to have to be huge. He's going to have to be huge. He's he'll he'll arguably be one of the best players. On the pitch, he's gonna to have to be huge, and he's gonna to have to come up big. He's gonna to have to come up like a freaking mammoth big, um, and it's and specifically with the guys that are missing and and so forth. This is the kind of game where it's about dot degree of difficulty. You have to deal with it. It is what it is. It's crazy. You're missing key players and and, and so forth. You're, you're you're playing away from home. You're gonna. This is what you want from your star player. Your superstar is the guy that rises above when things are most difficult. When things are most tricky. When things are not ideal. When things are not ideal, your guy is supposed to say what's up. Um, so, De Bruyne, let's see what you got. Let's see what you got. You know. Um... I don't want to end on this dude, man. I don't want to end, I want to end on this dude. Um, if ever there was a game to say what's up in, it would, it would be this, 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 this game. If ever there was a game to say what's up in, it would be this game. It's been a poor run of form. But... Eventually, eventually, you'll, they'll, you'll, Chelsea have to come out of it. Eventually, they will. This is just a bad run. It's a, it's a, it's a bad patch. It's a bad patch. Eventually, they'll pull through. And I think that for his psychology and his mentality and his morale, I think it would be very key if Timo Werner is the one that helps get Chelsea out of that difficult position. It's going to be very key. So, <sighs> Werner, you gotta, you have to start scoring soon, bro. You have to, you have to start scoring soon, bro. And my thing about this is that he's not being helped because I just think that the, the areas that he's taken up in the pitch and the, the areas in which he's he's put at isn't helping him. I think Chilwell's lack of dynamism isn't helping him because I think if Chilwell was much more dynamic, it would also help to. Gets Ven on those stronger positions, but you've had chances. Those goal scoring chances have been there. You have to put that shot away. This, it can't be this or that. It was too quick. You have to put the chances away, and you will get the chances. 
against Man City, knowing how they play, they will be defensive. They will give you space. You know you have the speed. You know so. This is the perfect team for Timo Werner. It is the perfect team for Timo Timo Werner. And if you have a situation where Timo Werner gets like two or three chances and he still comes goalless, bruh, bruh, that's deep. That's deep. Um, as I said, Chelsea have to win this game. They have to win this game. I'm not even considering a loss. or A, a loss, I'm not even considering that. A draw, no. Chelsea have to win this game. They're not playing well. Team is out of rhythm. They're out of touch. And I think, um, I saw it, the fans are split. I'm Lampard out. I want him, I would prefer he leaves amicably. I think that would be the great thing to, to do. If not, sack him. Because Chelsea Football Club is bigger than any one man. Lampard is not bigger than Chelsea Football Club. All that matters is what Chelsea Football Club can do and how, how they can win. I want trophies. Because I need it for my narrative and for my agenda. Okay? All that matters is my agenda, my narrative. And my narrative is always, I need I need a CL. I need it to the Premier League. I need those two trophies. FA Cup, whatever. Premier League, Champions League. Those are the two trophies that I demand every season. So does Bran. So, this Premier League table, it, it makes no sense. Okay? This Premier League table makes no sense whatsoever. I don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't accept it. Like, this makes, this, 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 I don't, I don't get this thing right now. Because, see, things are so crazy because you have so many games in hand. Villa have a game in hand. Tottenham have a game in hand. City have two games in hand. So it's all crazy. So it's very hard to judge what the to judge what the table truly looks like because of people who have games in hand and you don't know what they're gonna do if they have those games in hand. But um Chelsea City, they're both on 26 points. You know, like a win for Chelsea puts them back in the mix. It puts them back in the mix. A win for Man City, especially with the games in hand they'll have on everyone else, puts them in a very interesting position. So I think a win for either side, this being a top tier game, true could be very pivotal psychologically looking at this in the in the league. So um prediction Chelsea will win. Whether they play well or not, I have no idea. But I believe Chelsea will win. And I'm going for a standard 2-1 to, to, to Chelsea. You know, stand 2-1 with Chelsea. I think Chelsea, by virtue of the quality they have from their players and so forth, they will show up, they will get it done, and they'll make it happen. So Chelsea will get that dub. They will, they will get that dub. Um, I don't even want to fathom. I don't even want to fathom. <laughs> A loss or a draw. Like that doesn't even come to my side to my Pisaichi. That doesn't even come to my Pisaichi. Um so yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Um for that dub. For that win. So Chelsea will get the win 2-1. Um remember to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, at half a pot. And whatever happens. Whatever no, whatever happens. Join me for the post-match stream that will happen straight after the game. The post-match stream straight after the game on on, on Sunday. Um, and let me just say this right now. And this is just to all those Chelsea fans out there right now. I have standards. I have very high standards. And I will not change those standards. And those standards were brought to me by the great Roman Abramovich, arguably one of the greatest owners of all time. Because see, this is what people don't understand. Do you know how much Arsenal fans, United fans would pray for an owner like Roman Abramovich, where he's a genuine fan, he genuinely loves football, and he will generally try to fund the team and find the money to get the players that he wants. Do you know what people would do to have an owner? Do you know what people like United or Arsenal fans would do to have an owner like that? But some of you want to accept mediocrity. 
some of you want to get a freaking rookie to build a three-year, four-year process featuring Mason Mount, Declan Rice, and academy players. And no. You spend 200 mil, I expect results. Because every time any other manager spent that money, you expect the results. Lampard, you know di different. You spend, when you even spend the money, okay, cool. You spend that money, you get Havertz, Werner, Tego Silva, Chilwell, all these dudes. You spend on, expect results. I don't want to hear three years or four years. I expect results. Starting on Sunday, I expect a win. I want it to be a convincing win. Minimum a win. Minimum a dope. Anything less, like, subscribe. <laughs>